G'day. I'm here to talk to you today about pH. pH in your aquaponic system. Now, pH in our aquaponic system should be kept in a range between 6.2 and about 6.8 or 7. We try to keep it below 7 if we can, because that's an ideal range to have it in for proper mineral and nutrient absorption by the plants. The lower the pH, the better that works for them, particularly for things like iron. Uh, if the pH is above 7, even if you've got plenty of iron in your aquaponic system, the plants will not be able to take it up, or very little of it anyway, not enough to maintain their health. So we have to adjust the pH. Now, in a really healthy aquaponic system, the pH should be continually slowly dropping. In other words, it probably should drop about one or two points a week, depending on the size of your system, how hot the weather is, and how intense you're working it. But let's say it's going to drop one or two points a week. In other words, this week it might be 6.8, next week you might measure it, and it might be 6.7, and so on it'll go. When it gets down to about 6.4, we need to buffer it up. Now there are some happy coincidences that happen with this because there are three elements that don't come easily into an aquaponic system. And they are one iron, two potassium and three calcium. So these are the things that we need to add and we can happily add them when we're buffering our system. And today I just want to deal with one of them and that is adding of potassium. Because potassium is so important particularly to fruiting plants such as tomatoes, if you don't have enough potassium, for a start the flowers won't set and the fruit won't set and you'll get a very poor yield if you're low in potassium. Now let's imagine that, that our pH has dropped to say 6.4 and we want to buffer it up a couple of points back up to 6.8 so we would use potassium to do that on this particular occasion. Now on this particular occasion I'm going to use a substance called potassium hydroxide. Now this is a chemical and it's very highly alkaline or a base material and you need to handle it with great care. Just a warning here, people are very careful when they handle acids because they can feel them burning. You can do just as much damage to your skin by using a very strong base as you can by using a strong acid. The only difference with the bases or alkaline material is you probably won't feel it burning. and You'll do damage to your skin or eyes or some other part of your body uh, before you even know it. So you've got to handle them with great care. Now let's take a look at potassium hydroxide and I'll show you how much I add to this particular system. We find we have to do it about once every three weeks for potassium hydroxide. And this system has a total of about 12,000 litres of water in it. So it has a lot of water circulating around and you'll see just how small amount we do add for the job. Now I've got a container of potassium hydroxide here and this is what it looks like. It's a white flaky substance. Um, that is, um, you know, it's a chemical, so, and I don't like touching it with my hands. Now, I should really have gloves on, I guess, but I like to just use a teaspoon to do it. And you'll be able to see here where we've been adding before at this particular grow bed. And we choose this particular grow bed because it's a fair way away from the uh, fish tanks and those kind of places. So we want to add it in a place where it's not going to do any harm. So we just, in this particular system, we add two teaspoons. You can see the water dissolving it away really, really quickly there. It gets broken down very rapidly. Now while it's doing that, it's generating a fair bit of heat. So if you had that on your hands right now and you've got water on it, you'd get some severe burns. Now just that much potassium hydroxide going into the system will over a 24 hour period kick the system up from say 6.4 to 6.6, .6, which is a really nice mild adjustment of our pH. Now we like to do that, as I said earlier, about once every three weeks. And that provides potassium for our plants. One way we can tell, a very simple way we can tell if our plants are getting enough potassium, is by particularly taking note of what's happening with our tomato plants. Let me show you some of the stems of the tomato plants here. You can see right here by looking that these flowers have actually broken off at the knuckle. See that knuckle there where the, there is on the plant? That's the area where it will break off. See the knuckle there? Now this particular tomato has stuck so to speak but that's where it will break off that's a pretty good sign that the plant is actually suffering from potassium shortage now there can be some other base minerals etc that is missing as well but it's most likely to be potassium especially in the case of tomatoes so without having expensive water tests done you can tell how your plants are going by looking at that now there could be other reasons why that's happening too for example we could have um, no bees pollinating no cross-pollination occurring and the flower just simply dies and falls off. But most likely, because we've got other fruits set there, 
we know that potassium is a bit short in the system, so it's a good thing to add it. Tomatoes require a lot of it. That's enough about pH right now. I'll show you some other ways in the next video clip on how you can raise your pH when it gets down low. Really good ways to do it.